When you're first working in a language, maybe there is no orthography established yet. And you're wondering, can I use flex without an orthography? It's okay to go ahead and enter data in IPA to begin with. And then later you can add more writing systems as the orthography gets developed. And you can even have separate writing systems for different orthographies. So here I have a project set up to work on Quechua. Let's look at how the writing systems are set up. We'll go to format and set up vernacular writing systems. Now it has just the one language and there's a, a code with nothing appended to it and none of the variant stuff is set. Now, I wanna reserve this for what will eventually be the standard orthography. To begin with, I'm not going to enter anything in it, but Flex does want an unadorned version of the writing system with no modifications. So we'll just keep this around, but we'll keep it empty. So I wanna add another one, another writing system that will be just for IPA. So I can click on the add writing system button and there's actually a quick menu for adding an IPA version of it. Now it's crucial that the new one be of the same language and just be a variant of it. So I'll click this button and there's another one. It is still for the same language, but it's, it's modified. You can't really see it here, but this says International Phonetics Alphabet. Um, the code has this extra modifier on it. So the um, ethnologue code is the same or the ISO 639-3 code, but it's got this modification. It's got a variant. Let me set the font. This one is going to be in Dulos and I will set the keyboard to Unicode. And let's check the other one. That looks okay. And so now I need to just say, okay. And so now I have two writing systems. Um, when there are no entries, you can't see that. So let me go ahead and begin by entering a word. So again, I'm gonna skip the first um, writing system field and go to the IPA one. So I have a word hook and it means one. And for now, I'm just gonna call it a noun. That's not correct, but we'll just call it a noun. And I will create that entry. And so now you can see over here that the main writing system is empty and I have filled in the IPA. So let me just add a few more words. And presto, I've added a bunch of words. Um, but notice it's not showing in the column. Now the reason for that is that both of these columns are trying to show the primary writing system and the primary writing system has nothing in it. So let me configure these columns a little bit differently. Um, so I'll leave head word showing default vernacular. It is helpful to know if I accidentally put something in there. Under Lexeme form, let me tell it that I want the IPA version. Notice here, it tells me that that's, it's, it's a modified version of the writing system. So I will click okay. And then let me also do the fancy format thing to give this, the writing systems different colors. Um, I can't see the full name. Okay, so here, this is my default one. I'm going to make that dark red. And this is my IPA one. I'm gonna make it orange just for kicks. And I will make English be blue just in case, okay. So then we have some different colors and now we can see what's going on. And if we accidentally got something in the wrong field, we would be able to see that. Um, so the head words are all empty and that's good. You can see there's IPA in here. Some of these characters would not normally be part of the alphabet. And so I've entered some words and I can work with it and I can even gloss texts. I won't talk about that right now. And now some time has gone by and someone has developed a provisional, provisional orthography. Um, so let me go ahead and set up another one. Um, and so again, now I'm on this top one that's the unmodified version. I want to add a variation of it. I'm not adding a whole new language. I'm adding a variation of the existing language. Now in this case, 
I'm going to use these variant things. It automatically fills in Latin. I'm not going to worry about that variant. I'm going to call this the provisional orthography because maybe we're just experimenting with it and we don't know if they will like it or not. Um, and if I click over into any other field, then it fills this in up here. It changes to have a code. Now I do need to change this abbreviation. I'm going to call it Wayaga provisional. If I left it as wa, it would be exactly the same abbreviation as this other one, and I wouldn't be able to tell what I'm doing in the interface. So I will accept all of that. And now you can see I've got three rows. And so I could go through and just type these in the new orthography. Um, and to a large extent, it's similar. Now, I could also write a tech kit map. If I had a map or a CC table, then I could use bulk edit to fill these in. And that would go faster if you have a lot of words. And the map would also be documentation of um, how the orthography maps to IPA. Uh, a tech kit map is a, is a useful thing. Um, but since I only have 10 words, I'm just going to type them here. And I don't have to change the gloss because the gloss is the same. And so then maybe you'll enter more text using this orthography, but in the text, the baseline can only have one writing system. So you need to be careful about keeping it separate, the, the text that are in IPA versus the text that are in this provisional orthography versus the ones that are in the standard. Now, if I want to um, see another row, I can add another column for the lexeme form. Let's find the lexeme form and add it and move it up. And now this time I want this one to be in my provisional orthography. Okay, so now I have three columns. I don't like this white space being so big and let's make this narrower. Okay, maybe not quite so narrow. So now I've got three columns. So here's my IPA and here's my provisional orthography. And once you get to this point, you may or may not choose to keep entering IPA for everything. Now it could be helpful for a dictionary to show the pronunciation, um, but now I'm mainly working in this provisional one. Okay, so I've done that. Now suppose the people have said, we don't like this phonetic orthography. We want to go more with the orthography of the national language, which um, doesn't work like this. So once that gets finalized, then you can go back through and you can enter the words in that new orthography. So this one, okay, I didn't set up my keyboard. Let me go check on the keyboard that I'm doing for that one. I want this keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and use the IPA keyboard again, even though it's not IPA, but it allows me to do things like that. So here, this one word is spelled three different ways in the three different orthographies, but it's a single entry with one gloss. And you could have three different texts. You could have one text in IPA and one in the provisional and one in the final orthography. And um, maybe I'll pause and go set up a bulk edit map so I can demonstrate how to do that. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I have added my standard orthography and I want to fill it in, but rather than typing them all, I'm going to go to bulk edit entries. And I want to go to the process tab. The process tab is where I can set up tech kit maps. I've written a tech kit map for this mapping and it's pretty straightforward. It's mostly one-to-one. -one. There's one contextual rule, um, but it's straightforward. My source field is the provisional alphabet, which is this one. And the target field is the standard one, which is empty. If it's not empty, I will do nothing. I don't want to overwrite anything that's already filled in. And I want to use this map. Um, and it will be applied to this column to produce the results for that column. 
So let's do a preview and see, and we can see it's going to change things. It changes the K to a C, the H to a J, and it changed this long O to an O umlaut. And, or maybe it did that already last time. So I like what it's doing. Ah, hang on, there's a problem. This SH, it turned that H to a J. I don't want it to turn H to a J if the H came after an S. So I will untick that one and because that was going to be wrong and I'll do that one by hand. And then it can do all these others. So I will go ahead and apply. Because this cell is white, I can type in it. If it were blue, I cannot type in it. And I can just type in the new form there. And presto, I have the words in my standard orthography as well as the provisional and IPA. Let me go back to lexicon edit. And over there, I had all three columns showing. And ta-da, I have all three orthographies. And so now, once I've shifted into the new standard orthography, I probably would no longer be entering um, in the, the provisional orthography. Now, I could go to Setup Vernacular Writing Systems and click on the provisional orthography. If I right click, one of the options is to hide it. So if I click OK, then over here, it's no longer showing. Now the data is still in my project, but it's just not showing. I'm not exactly sure what happens to texts, but anyway, now at this point, any text I would write in the standard orthography and adding new entries, I would only write them in the standard orthography. And I might put the IPA because I probably do want that in my dictionary, but I can ignore the provisional one, but it's still there. So those are some of the steps for advancing through different levels of orthography approval in a FLEX project.